The Honorable Chief Justice and Associate Justices of the Supreme Court. The House will come to order. The Senate will come to order. Chair lays out House Bill 2147 by Hildebrand and recognizes the author to explain his bill. Thank you, Chairman Pickett and members. Uh, House Bill 2147 is very simple. Public safety bill. We've only, let's yeah, see, that's we only never hear that. we've never heard that never bill heard yet. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that's my bill. Okay. Uh, HB 2147 simply uh, it clarifies the authority and process by which folks working in our courthouses can carry a concealed handgun, assuming they have a concealed handgun license. <laughs> Provides a defense to felony prosecution for elected officials working on the premises where a government court is located so that they can carry a concealed handgun, assuming they have CH. Permit officials to allow, permits officials to allow county employees, clerks, secretaries, persons having first contact with the public to carry a concealed handgun, assuming they have a CHL, and allow counties to further improve security conditions in the courthouses and county annex buildings by permitting those having first contact with the public uh, to be equipped to respond in an emergency or life-threatening situation. I have a number of witnesses, a couple of witnesses here. I think we got the county judge from uh, Kimball County who was the, was the official that called me in my district and asked me to carry this bill. And then I think Jim Allison's put in a card too. And uh, let me just say, you know, the way I look at it, um, <coughs> when they brought the, the issue to me, um, you know, it occurs to me that increasingly in the last few years and certainly in the last month or two, we've seen violent acts uh, in and around courthouses, near courthouses. <coughs> and to me, this is, um, you know, allowing professionals public officials and other uh, professionals in the courthouse that have uh, qualified and have a concealed handgun license, done the training, pass the test, and are licensed uh, concealed handgun uh, holders, that they ought to be able to be there to help elevate another level of protection for the public and for those that work in the courthouses. Members, any questions for Chairman Hildebrand? I'd like to make a statement on that and, and tell you one thing. Uh, since the gentleman can't be here himself, I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the uh, district attorney uh, who was killed last week in his home by, with his wife, uh, he actually was in our office last week uh, supporting this bill. And so since he can't be here today, Thank you for I telling think me it's that. only I, fair I, you that. Know, this bill wouldn't have protected him in this case, but it, but it and it, and may or may not have protected the assistant DA that died first, but it's still those are indications of what we're facing and I, I'm, that's, I appreciate you letting me know that's touching to me. Well, Chairman, I think he, I think what he told our office was that uh, his assistant district attorney, who had, you know, died, been murdered, um, that they both were CHL carriers, and that he wished that he had had the, the right to have the gun with him when he's in court. So, I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. <clears throat> Any other questions? Chair calls Andrew Murr, county, is it county judge. Good afternoon. Thank you for being patient. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Andrew Murr. I'm the county judge of Kimball County in Junction, Texas, and uh, I am in support of the bill. I know that we're, we just had a serious moment, but uh, Junction? Yes, sir. Texas? Beautiful Junction, Texas. No, it really is. I, I was using you as an example again the other day uh, in another committee. Um, I have to meander. When I drive from here to El Paso, I've got to meander my way. Once I get to Junction, I'm only six hours from home. <laughs> yeah, get, get a little barbecue. I, I digress. I'm we're, sorry, Jeff. We're a gateway. That's what can I say? <laughs> it, is, it is a beautiful area. I, I'd like to thank my representative for filing this bill, and I don't intend to take up much of the committee's time other than I'd like to offer a little bit of an explanation of why I called my, my state representative. Um, as you know, we have a rural county. And our county, we only have about uh, 4,700 folks that live there. Every county has a courthouse. Our courthouse has only a few folks. Uh, you only have an assistant clerk or a deputy clerk or two in each office. So we are on a first-name basis with nearly every single person in our courthouse and, frankly, uh, a lot of the folks that come visit. 
And what we found uh, a few months back is I had my Justice of the Peace. I only have one JP for our county. Uh, she is a female, and she does have a CHL, as I do. She came and she said, I would like my male clerk to be able to carry. He has his CHL. Uh, we sometimes have angry folks off of interstate that have to come in and pay a traffic fine. And she just felt there was a need for that. And so we reviewed the law, and we wanted to make sure that we didn't do anything as a county to increase our civil liability or the liability of, of the clerk. And what we found was some ambiguity in the penal code as to places that you could carry. And so uh, we have gone ahead and attempted to take steps so that he could choose to carry. Uh, I know that there's a, a committee substitute that would be offered, and they would have additional language that would, art that would provide a definition of county employee. And that county employee in, in it would also state that approval might have need to come from both the commissioner's court and from the department head or the official over who that person has authority. So, but that's what necessitated my phone call because I did not want in, in current form uh, this committee clerk heard some some ruckus out in the hallway, stepped out, and then uh, actually saved lives by interjecting himself with his handgun, he, he is still susceptible to a third-degree felony. And you could have a, a zealous prosecution situation where suddenly we now have a county employee who may have saved lives, but he's on the hook for a criminal offense. And so that's what we were hoping to do is provide some additional clarity. And, and with that, I would certainly entertain any questions. Otherwise, I thank you for your time. Judge, any questions for the judge? Thank you. Thank you. What's the gas a gallon right now in Junction? Three seventy nine. Darn. I'll just stop and get the barbecue then. Everybody, everybody uses diesel out there. They don't need gas. Chair calls Jim Allison. Is Jim still here? Show him for the bill. Is there anybody else who wishes to testify on for or against House Bill twenty one forty seven? Hearing none, the chair recognizes Chairman Hildebrand to close. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, committee members, and um, there is a, uh, a committee substitute to make that correction that, the, that uh, the judge mentioned in his testimony, and it's in, in council, and so as soon as we get it, we'll get it forward to the committee. Thank you. Any questions for the chairman? Thank you. Thank you, Harvey. <clears throat> this chair's intent, leave hospital 2147 pending. Any objection, chair? Here's none. So ordered.